Good morning and welcome to MarketCast 5, live from the AF Oliver offices here in Bournemouth. Well, sunny Bournemouth so far this morning, so it's quite warm in the studio here. Uh, now, we've got a lot to get through this morning, but before we do, I can't possibly go straight into MarketCast 5 without a brief mention of the shirt, of course. Um, I'd like to thank all of you who have made such uh, very nice comments about the shirt uh, on LinkedIn over the last few hours. And to those of you who've made some not quite so kind comments, I'll be talking to you personally uh, one by one. But hey, uh, we're, we're often we're away. We've got some really important things to discuss. I've tried to shift the format this time around, change it around slightly, uh, and I am going to shift the emphasis on, uh, as to where the market goes next and how quickly it goes there. And I also want to share with you a really important theory, a price curve theory that I'm going to come to in the last 10 minutes uh, of this market cast. There's still a fair bit of data at the front end of this, but I have tried to take out some of the stuff that just repeats what those other data sources are saying. So that's really important. The other thing that's important is to talk about seasonality. So many of these numbers refer to our move from June into July. And as all of you know, that, that, that seasonal shift is going to see a natural downturn in the market anyway. And so our judgment shouldn't be clouded by that, that move in numbers that just reflects the change in seasons. It's an interesting thing with COVID last year, it sort of wiped the seasons out. Everybody just came at the market in a rush uh, and, and, we, and we sort of lost that seasonal bounce that we tend to see, yeah? that, that slight downturn from the spring market into the summer market as we move from June into July. Uh, but this year, that's much more evident. Uh, there's another uh, really crucial thing that I'd like to talk about, and that's locality. On the basis that we are webcasting this out to a fairly significant audience across the UK, it's impossible for me to zoom in into one particular location. But the way the market operates in the different locations across the UK is extreme. If you look at the Zoopla Cities Index, now Zoopla in their May numbers had a national average uh, inflation number of 8.4%. Their new numbers are due out next week, by the way. Um, and then in their Cities Index, they list all the key cities through the UK and give the inflation numbers just for that city. And sitting at the top of that list, you've got Nottingham at 10.4%. And sitting at the bottom of that list, you've got Aberdeen in negative growth, minus 2%. So from top to bottom, you've got a 12.5% shift in the way that inflation is moving. So when we talk in average numbers, it's, it's crucial we bear that in mind. And the idea is that this average then gives us a backdrop against which we judge the market and which we judge how local markets are performing. And I'll talk much more about local markets and managing that price curve in local markets as we go on. So how's the market doing generally? Well, it, it's, <laughs> I, you, you, you read the RICS report and I love the whole, the whole estate agent thing where we have a mix in that profession, don't we? Where the frontline salespeople and estate agents are essentially all optimists. And then the surveyors that are going out and doing the valuations are essentially all pessimists. And we take that mix in between. I enjoyed uh, Justin Markin, Savile's Justin Markin actually um, recorded their July update, which came into my uh, inbox yesterday. Um, the very likable and knowledgeable Justin Markin. And, and, and his comment, I thought, was lovely that he felt that the market right now was less febrile. Uh, I, which I just thought was a great way to describe the move from right moves spring frenzy, remember that, into this slightly more cautious market. He actually used the phrase, we're seeing more caution from buyers. But what was good, picking out of the five minutes that he was uh, uh, on screen doing that update, was that uh, Savile's instructions, they report instructions up by 43%. We're seeing more properties come onto the market. And while all that's going on, of course, we've got the Conservative leadership election going on. Are we going to see Rishi in? Are we going to see Liz in? Uh, will that affect uh, the government's attitude to the house building sector? Are we going to see a help to buy replacement? You know, we've talked about deposit unlock and so on. 
Uh, this is really going to be a time when uh, all the developers are going to need their uh, financial advisors, their, their IFAs to, to uh, be heavily creative and help them in the next steps. So let's get into the uh, report proper. Let's have a, a look at some of the reasons to be cheerful. Well, the Right Move Index for July hit its sixth consecutive record level. Um, it's still warned of downturn to come, or I think it, uh, we'll, we'll see in a moment, I think it said a market that's going to move from boil to simmer. What a great way of describing it. Demand is still ahead of supply, and you'll see that when I show you the numbers from Zoopla. The strong labour market, the market is still red hot in terms of uh, em employment, and, and that is a really important underpinning element of, uh, of how the market operates. And we'll, we'll look at that matrix in a tick. Uh, we are seeing more sellers coming into the market. I talked about the Savills numbers there. And the Bank of England, interestingly, have just dropped their affordability criteria. Well, I say they've just dropped. They're going to drop it at the end of July. What is important to note, though, is that they still have the loan to income limits. So they limit the lenders uh, to uh, lending at above four and a half times uh, people's income level. So that's still out there. And of course, we've still got the affordability uh, assessment as well uh, that, that, that all of the lenders need to consider. And the, the money supply, the mortgage supply is a really important factor in the market uh, over the next few months. Okay, uh, causes for concern, political uncertainty, most definitely, who knows who's going to win and who knows what they're going to do. Uh, the war in Ukraine still shows no signs of ending. You know, one or two bright signs there that we might be seeing goods coming out of the country, but it is still playing havoc in geopolitical terms. Uh, the uh, inflation rate continues to soar. The CPIH, so that's the Consumer Price Index with the uh, homeowners costs in there, which I think is much more relevant to us, uh, rises to 8.2%. I think that's the highest since 1991, that's over 30 years. And the CPI, the Consumer Price Index now, up to 9.4%, a 40-year high. And the reason that's so particularly important to us uh, it, it are the measures that the bank are going to take to try and control that. I'm sure you're all aware uh, that the Fed yesterday in the, in the US um, hiked interest rates by a whopping 0.75%. Um, we know that the uh, MPC, the Monetary Policy Committee, is going to meet on August the 4th, and we can be almost certain we are going to see a substantial increase. Whether that will be 0.5 of a percent, taking us up to 1.75, or maybe even they'll follow the US and take rates all the way up to two, but it is going to mean an increase in rates. There is no doubt about that. Um, and... Uh, the important thing in terms of our cause, cause for concern, and I said this last month, and I've put it back in again this month in capital letters, we have passed the peak rate of inflation in this current cycle. And, and there is absolutely no doubt at all about that. What, importantly now, it's how we manage that and at what rate we come down the other side in the transition. I introduced you to the market factor matrix. And this now for me has become a really important tool in, in trying to determine exactly how far and how fast the market's going to move. Uh, and it means that uh, as things change, like interest rates and mortgage availability and, and so on, uh, I, I'm actually able to move all the uh, elements of this about. Uh, when you look at the recording of this video, we'll show this in a little more detail, but to just to give you a sense here, uh, in the positive effect on this matrix. And as a reminder, what we've got, we've set this out with factors which actually have a fairly low impact on the market, an important impact, but a slower burn, if you like, not such an immediate effect. They go at the left end of the matrix. And as we work our way from left to right, we come into factors that have a very high impact, an immediate effect on the market and how it moves. And then the elements that are at the top of the matrix here are those that have the most positive effect. And then obviously the reverse at the base there, the, the elements that have the most negative effect. And in here then at the moment, we've got at this end lifestyle changes. That sits there underpinning the market, no question about that. But even that has eased 
uh, as we've moved out of, of COVID and moved back into a, a more normal way of life. I'm sure you've all seen how the uh, central city markets have actually come back now and uh, particularly London, uh, which has actually moved back into uh, outperforming the rest of the UK over the last three months. Uh, and then if we look, as we move up here on the positive effect, the employment market is burning red hot right now. Everybody's looking for people. That's really important to us. Low fixed mortgage rates, we're still low. I've, those sharp-eyed ones amongst you that saw this broadcast last month will see that I have actually moved that. I've moved that into a higher impact position because mortgage rates are actually obviously being discussed at the moment and they are going to rise. There's an awful lot of remortgaging going on at the moment with people coming to the, towards the end of their fixed terms that are now trying to fix the term for the next two, three years before those interest rate rise, uh, rates rise again. Savvy purchases. Uh, and, and right up here, the most positive effect currently on the market and the highest impact, low supply, high demand. That's changing. I've moved that slightly back. That is changing, no question, but it still sits there really high. And in the negative factors, we know that general inflation is really going through the roof. We'll talk about that. High homeowner running costs. There are news stories this morning saying that uh, they, with the new cap that's coming, a couple of years time, the average household could be facing energy bills of 500 pounds a month. That's absolutely enormous. We'll see this, I think, coming further up the, the, the matrix. Low consumer confidence, and I'm including in there all the factors that actually affect that. So that's the war in Ukraine, the conservative leadership uh, uh, election, all of those things that go in there that means that we're seeing consumer confidence right down at rock bottom. This is the big one here. And at the moment, I've got that on the lower side of impact, and that's mortgage availability. Make no mistake that if the government decide to put pressure on the institutions to limit the amount of mortgage funds available to the market, this will come very sharply up here and will really have a significant impact and effect uh, on, the, on the market. As we move towards a higher impact, affordability getting more difficult as interest rates rise uh, and of course the possibility of mo rising mortgage rates and you can see how that balances here. I've also put on here three little blue ones here, all in the positive. And this is where it's actually in uh, the hands of the developers, uh, a part exchange, which I've sat in the middle in terms of impact. It obviously depends how each individual organization manages that scheme uh, and the terms that it applies to it. You're actually able to dial up and dial down the impact of, of, of that uh, incentive. Financial products. Every developer right now re needs a really good and a really creative uh, IFA. Uh, they're going to be very, very important, particularly as we come to the end of the year and the end of help to buy. Uh, and uh, it's the D word, so I'm really sorry about that, but it is high impact and it obviously does have a positive effect and that is discounts. And when I say discounts, I don't just mean reducing a selling price. I mean introducing things like stamp duty incentives or, or, or other ways of feeding a discount into the overall net buying price for the purchaser. There's my matrix that will feed into how I feel about the market when we come to the end of this deck. Some data, some data to underpin what I'm going to say next. And when I talk about price curve and, and what's going to happen over the next six months, so the second half of this year, here's the right move July numbers. And you can see there, this is their sixth record uh, on, on a bounce. But look at this, it's cooling from boil to simmer. Uh, and, and I think that's a really good way of describing it, actually. Uh, but their average asking price now is up to almost £370,000. Extraordinary numbers. Um, what is important, if you look at this chart up in the top left-hand side, I've stuck a couple of arrows on here, a beautifully crafted arrows, if you don't mind me saying so. Um, here's our rate of increase. This is their average asking price trend. This is right move. One of the reasons right move is important, two really significant reasons. A, it's a massive piece of data. The, the numbers in here, the numbers that feed into these charts actually represent around 95% of all properties for sale in the UK right now. So it is a, a truly 
wide represented, uh, representative sample of uh, property for sale in the UK. Number two, they are asking prices. So it's a canary statistic. So the way that asking prices move give us a really good indication of selling prices two months down the line, two, three months down the line. So here's asking prices on that trajectory here, and here's the last two months. So although they've done a, 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 a sixth consecutive record price, here's that and here's that. And that's the way the market's moving. Here's boil and here's simmer. And, and, and hopefully in a really graphic way that gives you a very, very good idea of what's happening. And these are asking prices. So these are people that want to put their property on the market and maybe take a little bit of a chance to see what they can achieve. And that's a great indication there. And you can see it actually when you look down in here. So that's the average trend gone from boil to simmer. And if you look down here, this is the monthly change. And this is where we were. And this is where we are. There's an element of seasonality in this, as I stated right at the start but the trend is unmissable in my view. Uh, the average time to secure a buyer, which came right down here, well, it's bouncing along at 32 days, still incredibly low. And any agent watching this would be the first to be sticking their hand up and saying, a good property comes on the market, it's gone in hours rather than days. So I do fully accept that, that's still out there. Nationwide numbers, bit out of date now. Uh, the, the new nationwide numbers, I think they might, it might even be tomorrow that they're out actually, so we're, we're, we're right there. But the important thing about the nationwide uh, numbers is that it's, again, it's showing it's still in increase, it's, it's still uh, in inflation, but the rate of inflation has come off the top, and I'm going to focus on that in a little while. So we've gone from asking prices to mortgages approved prices, and if we go to Zoopla, Oh, sorry, nationwide three months on three months first, um, which I think is a really important index because it, it, it really clearly shows us this trend. Take out the COVID dips here, and then you can really start to see the shape of the trend that we're, we're seeing. So even allowing for the seasonality of the move from May into June into July, so we, you know, we'd expect some of the numbers to come off, there is a clear, uh, a, you know, unmistakable trend going on. At the end of this presentation, I'm going to talk much more about what, where prices go next, and I am going to use the nationwide index as my benchmark. Now, you can argue whether that's right or whether that's wrong. One of the problems with using mortgage approved numbers is it's a little bit historical. You can't use asking prices because they are much too volatile, people taking chances and so on. Uh, so, so the, the nationwide is a really good, consistent marker. Uh, and I think that if we are going to talk about the way that trends are in the housing market, we, we, we need a good, solid marker to, to work from. And I'm going to work from the nationwide, even though it's obviously none of these indices are perfect. Um, Zoopla, the new numbers, the due numbers are, uh, for Zoopla are out any minute. Um, but in the meantime, they have this wonderful blended uh, index, um, really effective. So they take some mortgage approved prices and they take some sold prices and they take some asking prices and they blend it and get a really solid algorithm. Uh, and, and what is quite interesting, so there's their national picture at 8.4%. I think I said earlier on that ranges from 10.5% in their cities index down to minus 2%. So the regional picture really is complicated. But this 40% this in here is the Demand for, for homes in the four weeks up to this date compared to the five-year average. So across the five-year average, demand for homes in the last four weeks, in the four weeks up to uh, the end of May, uh, is 40% above. However, if you remember last month's uh, market cast with the April numbers in, that was actually 61%. So you can see where we're going here with that. It's again, it's the same picture. It's why I'm, I'm, I'm in absolutely no doubt. I thought it worth sticking this um, Gronya Gilmore quote in, uh, somebody I think that's got a really good handle on the market. Uh, and she says in here that, uh, that strong market out there, however you measure it, but the impetus is slowing. More price sensitivity, going back to Justin Markin's point, uh, more caution from buyers. L what was it? Less febrile. Love that, less febrile. Uh, and, and again here, 
this demand supply. So, so you'll remember from the matrix, it's a really important part of, of, of what makes up the, uh, the buying decision making process for purchasers. Uh, and, and you can see here that this is starting to ease. So although this stock of new homes is still 33% lower than the five year average, that's a dramatic improvement from where it was last month. And it continues to, it continues to move that way. First canary slide then, mortgage approvals. Uh, the, the new numbers on these mortgage approvals are due out tomorrow morning at nine o'clock. Uh, these ones here, as you can see, are for the end of May, but mortgage approvals sit at 66,000. That's a really simple thing. The number of mortgage approvals will be two thirds the number of completions in three months time. So that just tells us exactly where we're going in terms of volume. We're back to the 100,000 a month, no question about that. Um, and if we look here, these are the latest numbers from HMRC. So the latest volume numbers from HMRC, and these are reflecting that. Here was our, our period up to 2019. Here's COVID, here's the silly stamp duty nonsense that caused such a hiatus. Um, but that, if I took that number back there, that's a rock solid 100,000 a month transactions, 1.2 million a year. And here we are coming back down and settling back down into this pattern. I still think we'll end the year with around 1.3 million transactions this year. Really important then, this is the Bank of England. These are the average mortgage rates that uh, are out there and on offer. And you can see how they're climbing. So these are two year fixed rates over here. And these are rates of various, uh, 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 of 75% loan to value over varying terms. And you can see where the money here is. Uh, you know, that everything is up now, coming up north of 3%, almost regardless of loan to value. And look at where the 10 year money has gone uh, up here. So we can see where interest rates are moving. Uh, 10 year money now up at 3.29. And if you look at a, a two year 95% loan to value, that's a three and a half percent rate. So that's, a, that's gone up a, 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 a one and a half percent from where we were a few months ago. Inflation, I've already talked about the rates and where that is, but you can see from this chart, the dramatic increase in inflation since the Russian invasion of Ukraine. And on the Canary slide, consumer confidence. I've spent a lot of time talking about this and I wanna focus on other things today. So just briefly then, Here's the middle line here, 2000 people asking this, are being asked this survey, really simple, straightforward. Is the next 12 months going to be better or worse? Well, when it comes to the UK economy, you can see from zero down to here, a record low of people that feel that the economy is gonna get worse. If we look at this green line here, is it a good or a bad time over the next 12 months to buy and make a major purchase, a house, a car, a kitchen? And you can see where we are down here again in record lows. And even on this move line, which is where they, the question is, how are your own personal finances going to fare over the next 12 months? Are they going to get better or are they going to get worse? Here's the red line here. And you can see how people feel about their personal finances, even though there was a slight uptick, I might say, in the July numbers. The red line in the middle there is the overall index and it stays nailed down there on a record low. This survey was introduced in 1974. That is a record low. So it's lower than the 0809 financial crisis. It's lower than the peak of COVID. It's a record low. So when I say consumer confidence is on the floor, I really do mean that. Briefly on the June survey of the RICS, uh, these are more the, well, a mix of the optimists and the pessimists. On the Canary slide, this one over here, you can see these are the newly agreed sales. There is an element of seasonality in here, but you can see where we are. So this is a reduction from May into June for, of newly agreed sales, pretty much across the whole of the UK, with London being a bit of an outlier with an increase. And new instructions, so important to that balance in the market, that demand versus supply balance in the market. And you can see where we are, some up, some down, but generally pretty flat. Uh, and then when we actually look at new buyer inquiries, hey, seasonal, there's a seasonal element in here, but you, can, you don't need to be a genius to actually see where those numbers sit. And in terms of prices through the regions over the last three months, look at the floating diamonds. For those of you that are able to refer to last month's, you'll know that the monthly number 
So the big mauve bar swallowed up the three month average, most of those diamonds. And you can see now that they all start to float as the numbers move back. And if you ask the surveyors about where prices are gonna go, well, look at this. The three month expectation on prices now is pretty much down to a split opinion, half thinking up and half thinking down. It's around about the zero. The 12 month is still in strong positive, but you can see where the trend is headed. Uh, and then lastly, if you look at the price expectations by region, there are a lot of floating diamonds out there. Quickly on stocks per agent, and I use the right move numbers for this rather than the RICS, just because the sample is so much bigger. And you can see here, they're starting to climb. It's a really discernible trend that's starting to climb 40 through here up to 47 for their numbers up to the end of June. So that's important. Okay, just wanna show you this. I've, I've promoted this to a canary level slide. So this is the classic right move UK map, which normally you have a quick glance at and you say, well, what does that actually mean to me? And this actually leads me in really nicely to what I want to say about where prices are going next. Number one, they're asking prices. So this is important. This gives us a steer of where prices are gonna be in a couple of months time. And number two, they're split down by region. So what I did was I looked at these prices here, which is their, their, their July numbers, and I compared it to their survey from a couple of months ago. If you, when you look at that, here are three regions here where the rate of increase, the rate of inflation is higher now than it was a couple of months ago. And yeah, that's pretty much Scotland, the Northeast and Yorks and Humber and all the others where the rate of increase now is lower than it was a couple of months ago. So that shows us really clearly where the trend is headed, but it also means that we're actually able to drill down on that trend region by region. In my view, we need to go further than just by region and we need to go into locale, but more of that. If we look at the factors on the matrix, how much longer have we got to go team out of interest? Three minutes, okay. It's gonna be a busy three minutes. So if we look at the, uh, the second half based on all the facts that I've dashed through there, I see that the month on month growth is going to be stalling by the end of September. I'm, I'm, I'm in no doubt about that. I think we're gonna see some negative average growth in between September and the end of 2022. And I see that as we get to the end of the year, based on the nationwide index, there are a range of indices based on the nationwide numbers, we'll see prices about 6% higher than where they were in December 2021. Now, what that actually means is that we, we are gonna see prices at the end of the year pretty much where they are now. So this is a really important couple of minutes to finish because I wanna talk about price curves. You know, I, I know that the majority of the audience for this webcast are in the new homes industry, uh, and this re relates specifically to the new homes industry. Okay, uh, you remember me talking about the coyote story, the roadrunner, about how we all charge up the hill following a trend and then when the trend changes, we've carried on charging and then suddenly we look down and the ground has disappeared. Uh, this was that Halifax price index thing that I used to do back in the day. And what I, what I did was I highlighted the end of the 1980s into 1990 because every builder that is over 40 years old remembers this ever so well. And they think of this as one of the worst recessions they've ever been through. But when you actually look at it here, this is 1987 to 1991. Actually, it wasn't a huge price crash that they thought. What actually happened was a bit of an optical illusion. This was the journey we were on going into that 1990 crash. So everybody was looking like this. That was, that was the trajectory. Suddenly inflation stopped, absolutely stopped like somebody hammered on the brakes at 100 miles an hour. This trajectory carried on, so the perception in the industry was that there was this massive fall in value. Well, I think, not to this extent, I think we are close to the same thing happening right now. Let me explain what I mean. Here are the nationwide national increase in price, average increase in price for the UK from January up until that index I showed you just now, June. 
I am now forecasting where I think the next six months are going to go. And it looks like that. So if we're going to end up December with inflation sitting at around 6%, this is where the rate of inflation is going to go over the next six months. So it's still inflation. It's still prices higher than they were a year ago. But what does that actually mean to us? And that's what's really important. And what does it mean when we're talking about forecasts and looking further forward and the prices we're applying to plots that are yet to be released for sale? Here is the na current nationwide average selling price per month. Here it is. That's where we've gone. It's to here. And that's where we sit at the end of June. OK, so if we go with this rate of inflation, if you are with me and if you're agreeing that we're going to end the year at about 6%, well, this is what happens. This is what happens. If these numbers are correct, if these forecasts are correct, this is what happens to the average price, according to the nationwide. So comparing this position against where we were at that time last year, at that rate of inflation, and you can see that what we've actually got here in between September and the end of the year is a fall in average price. So although the annual rate of inflation is still in positive, prices have actually fallen on average. Now that's a big concept to deliver in a few seconds. And obviously regional markets will vary enormously, but I am absolutely convinced that that's the case. And if you want me to apply that coyote moment to you, if your pricing policy is on that trajectory, you, you can see where it's going. So if we're talking now, we're on this price trajectory and we're talking now about sites that might launch here. If we take that price trajectory, you're going to be here and the achievable prices are gonna be there. That is that massive difference in perceived prices. Uh, it's, it's, it's a big element, it's a, it's a big concept. For me, the next six months are all going to be about finding, fine tuning that pricing policy. What I'd really love everybody to be doing is actually setting that price curve out for right down to a micro level, almost for every development, because the rate of inflation on each one is going to be different. So when I talk about averages, that is of little use to someone that is going to actually be releasing a site in uh, Aberdeen or Nottingham, you know, because they're going to be so far out of that norm. So we build a price curve for each and every site using canary, reliable canary data. And you will actually be able to plot that curve and see exactly where those numbers are going to be six months further forward. So the idea being that you drive maximum income from in every market that will support it, and where we've got markets that won't support it, we take commercial decisions, we'd be a bit more brutal, uh, and we, 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 turn, we, we, we turn the product, turn the cash. So that's a, a lot to say in the last couple of minutes. How are we doing for time? Over. I'm over. Sorry, everybody, okay, I'm over, but I got very excited about that. You can see uh, that was a sort of midnight oil uh, moment there. So. Uh, Big thanks to the team. Hannah, a new member of the team now, production team with us, uh, and uh, Joan and James, obviously. Our next market cast, we're not going to do one for August. We're going to have a holiday. Unless something extraordinary happens, we might change that. Uh, the next planned market cast is September the 27th, another 8.30 run. There'll be another delicious shirt on show. Um, but I really do hope that you found that useful, particularly those last few minutes. Uh, and uh, thanks so much for watching. Uh, the recording of this will be up in the next day or so.